Hello, today on the What If Brigade, I'm going to be addressing a, uh, a video that was recently put out by Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiatoria, and uh, it uh, was titled, uh, you know, kind of weapons and armor for uh, the Conan universe. Uh, and the question that he took from a patron was, uh, if you went through a door and you didn't know what you would be doing, you might be on foot, you might be on horseback, you might be on a ship, and you didn't, you didn't really know um, if, uh, if you would have to fight. You might be in a duel. You might have to march off to war. You might be in a siege. You know, all those things. Uh, what weapons and armor would you pick? And, and, and at first, I thought, well, I've sort of already done this. I did, what if you were an adventurer? And, uh, and, I, and I picked some weapons and armor that I thought were really flexible for adventuring for a wide variety of situations. But... Uh, uh, Matt brought up a really interesting point about the door situation that's very different from an adventurer. If you set out an adventurer as an adventurer, uh, you kind of have to take everything that you want and need with you, and uh, everything kind of adds weight. So if you're not on a horse and you're not in a ship and you're bringing a bunch of stuff that's only useful, if you were in those situations, uh, that's going to be really annoying. <laughs> you're not going to want to carry that stuff hundreds of miles uh, I don't know if you've ever done a lot of hiking, uh, but uh, every uh, kilo, every pound in your pack, every ounce uh, matters, and you want to get rid of as many things as you can. And my original video really focused on uh, uh, weapons and armor that were useful, not just as weapons and armor, that were useful in, say, camping. <laughs> or survival, wilderness survival situations. And if you're an adventurer, that's really important because weight is at a premium, um, especially if you're planning on hauling any gold back because that's heavy. Uh, so, uh, but the magic door situation is very different. And um, one of the things, one of the great ideas he brought up is that, you know, if you have uh, something and you go through the door and it's not really useful to you, I mean, you just chuck it. Uh, and, and, you know, especially for the magic door situation, you don't know where you're going. Uh, so you want to you want to be flexible where, um, you know, kind of my adventuring equipment. I assume that if you change environments, you go from a walking through woodland forest to riding on the plains in a horse or you get on a ship, you could sort of change up your equipment. You could modify a little bit. But if you're just stepping through a door, you kind of need everything that you want with you immediately. And of course, if you're just stepping through a door into, you know, a village somewhere, uh, you know, having extra stuff is great for barter and trade. And, and, you know, even if you're stepping into some sort of fight or battle situation, you, there might be people around you that don't have the right equipment. And, you, you know, if you have two swords, hey, <laughs> give a sword to your buddy. Uh, they're going to be your new friend. Uh, so so uh, that brought up a really fascinating aspect to this. And uh, so the first thing I kind of want to address is uh, what Matt addressed, um, and that is armor. And uh, so just a brief recap, in my original video, I talked about, um, I talked about Gambeson, I talked about a large bowie knife, I talked about a hatchet, I talked about a short one-handed sword, and I talked about a spear. Uh, so that was kind of the, the basic equipment that I, that I went over. So um, uh, Matt uh, had a really, really in-depth uh, uh, explanation of what he would do for weapons and uh, for, uh, for armor and I thought it was really really good and it, particularly for this door scenario I am going to uh, modify my ideas very close to what Matt was saying um, in that um, I'm gonna keep the Gemson that's gonna be um, my uh, bottom layer um, because uh, for all the reasons that I outlined in my original video but if it's very, very cold, or I'm going to have to walk a long ways, I'm going to want Gambeson. Even on a ship. If I'm in a ship and I'm in the North Sea, Gambeson's going to feel great. Just nice and toasty warm. What a great idea. In a way that, you know, a, a steel breastplate or a helmet really isn't. Uh, but on, on that note, um, you know, yeah, I mean, when I'm just stepping through a door. I don't have to carry this stuff hundreds of miles. Why not have a nice open-faced helmet? Uh, you know, if you're going to have something that closes, you want to make sure it's removable because we don't know what situation we're going to be in. So that the fact that the visor closes could be, um, might be useless. Uh, so maybe a detachable visor. Uh, but I, for me personally, I'd go open face because I like to breathe. 
Um, and then, um, but you know, there's no reason not to put a nice uh, cuirass, a nice breastplate over the gambeson. And then uh, Matt brought up some other points in terms of, you know, armor for the arms and legs. You can do, uh, you can do, you want to do stuff that you can take on and off. So whether it is chain or whether it is plate, uh, you want, uh, it doesn't, it honestly matters less what type of armor it is and more how easy it is to take in and on and off. I'm sure there are, um, uh, armor for the arms and legs that is very difficult to take off, uh, plates, uh, and then there's chains for the arms and legs that are very difficult to take off, and you don't want that. You want the ones that you can just put on by yourself, uh, you know, take care of it that way. Um, and, um, he, he kind of revised his, uh, weapons about halfway through in order to talk about a shield. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about shields and, um, and this is kind of, um, um, uh, maybe a little bit more in depth than he went into. Uh, and I've, I've got my reasons for that. So I bring two shields. Um, I would, first of all, I bring a nice little buckler that I can just put on my belt. Um, and that's more of an adventuring shield. Uh, that's going to be something that's really, you know, not that hard to carry. And, uh, it's, it's gonna, it's going to be useful in a variety of situations. Um, and it's not really going to weigh me down too much. And I'm also going to bring a Roman scutum. Uh, and I did give this some thought. I thought about, you know, a Viking round shield. I thought about a heater shield. And uh, those would be easier to carry, uh, yes. But for, for the most part, uh, if I'm in a situation where I really need a shield, like a duel or I'm going off to war, uh, I think for the weapon set I've picked, uh, I would I would do best with the, the biggest possible shield, um, and uh, uh, I uh, and if it's if it's too much, I can ditch it and just keep the buckler. But for my mind, hiking with a heater shield and hiking with a Roman scutum are both going to be really annoying. Yes, the Roman scutum is more annoying, but the Roman scutum is also more useful around the camp. If it is raining and you put your pack under a Roman scutum, that pack's going to be dry. It's great. I, I mean, you can practically almost sleep under that thing. That It's, it's huge. Um, and from my particular weapon set, um, and if you, Matt Easton kind of, kind of settled eventually on the, the uh, um, shield, spear, sword weapon set. Um, and, um, you know, if you remember my earlier video, you know, I talked about a, a short one-handed sword and a spear. These work really well with a Roman scutum, it's particularly a short one-handed sword. You know, Matt talked about uh, a falchion or a messer with some hand protection. You know, I've mentioned, um, you know, it, I mean, obviously, if you have like a hanger or a saber, that's, that's, that's cool, too, if you're in some sort of fantasy setting where that's available. But, uh, but you know, even if you have a gladius, you know, if you've got that short sword, having a bigger shield really offsets a lot of the disadvantages where, uh, yes, if you have a really a nice long um, arming sword and you've got a heater shield, that that is really cool. Uh, and though, um, um, you know, it, the heater shield does not work as well with, say, uh, hiding behind it with a crossbow. Those kinds of things. Uh, so, uh, so I'd have two shields, the little buckler and the big scutum, and I would probably throw away the one that, uh, or sell uh, the one that, and give away the one that was least useful to me. Uh, so that's kind of the, um, the armor and the shield. Uh, and then um, in, in terms of the weapons, uh, Matt brought up a really good point about Ronald Daggers, and you know, my adventuring equipment was really focused on more of a hunting Bowie type knife uh, because it's useful around the camp, where a Ronald Dagger is less useful around camp. But a Ronald Dagger is really good against armor, it's really good for stabbing, and again, if you're walking through this magic door and you don't know where you're going to be, then uh, having both makes just an enormous amount of sense. If you're on a ship, you don't care how many daggers you have. If you're on horseback, your horse can carry both a Ronald Dagger and a Bowie knife, it'll be fine. Uh, you know, and if you're, uh, you know, in a duel, okay, Ronald Dagger, drop the Bowie knife. 
Uh, so, so, so really, you, you want to have both of those knives, and, and really, a Ronald Egger is not that heavy. This is not a lot of extra weight. Uh, so even if you do end up uh, hauling a long, long way, this is probably going to be the thing that you throw away um, last. Uh, you know, next on my list, you know, in my adventuring equipment, I talked about hatchet. A hatchet is a useful camp tool. It is also useful against armor. Uh, you can chop wood with it. You can uh, chop uh, knight skulls <laughs> right through their right through their helmet. Um, so it, it's very useful. Uh, you know, if you've got one with the flat back, you can use it as a hammer as well. Um, uh, <clears throat> and um, but if we're going through a magic door, uh, you know, I can have whatever I want. Uh, I'm going to bring a hatchet, yes, just like before. Uh, the base equipment kind of just all stays the same. I'm just sprucing it up, uh, essentially. Uh, I'm also going to bring a tomahawk. I mean, why not? Maybe a tomahawk would be more useful. I would, uh, I would get a tomahawk that I thought would at least be passively useful, pass passively useful around the camp. But again, if I'm on a horse or um, I'm on a ship. Uh, why not both? Um, and you know, if I'm immediately in a fight, I can throw the tomahawk um, and keep the hatchet in reserve. Um, and again, and and also you know, barter or trade whichever one I think is going to be less useful. Um, so bring the hatchet and the tomahawk. Why? Why would I want to be without one of those? Uh, I, I'm going to want one for sure. Uh, and then you know um, the. The, the spear, um, you know, I, 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 I stand behind my spear. It's going to be great for hunting. Uh, it, it's uh, useful in, on a ship. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it is useful from the back of a horse. Uh, it, uh, it makes a great walking stick if you've got to do a long march. Uh, and it's useful behind that scutum uh, weapon system where a lot of cool pole arms are two-handed and then you, you're not going to have that shield. And, and that's fine if you're in specific contexts, but it's not very flexible. A spear is just, just really flexible. It doesn't matter if you're hunting boar or uh, uh, charging the enemy from the back of a horse. It is going to do lots of great stuff. Um, it, yes, not as great as some particular polearm weapons, uh, but uh, most of those can't be thrown, aren't as easy to use behind a shield, all those sorts of things. So uh, for those reasons, Especially since, you know, we're, we're basically, we're loading ourselves up with way too much stuff and we're going to have to get rid of some things anyway. Um, something like a spear is going to be really easy to, to get rid of, uh, you know, pretty easy to just throw and then we're done with the spear. Uh, but um, I, I also want to address, uh, uh, Matt uh, pointed out, uh, you know, that Adventurers bringing a pole arm and a bow is ridiculous. Uh, you know, people do it in D and D or whatever. But that that if you, honestly, if you if you're if you're going to take a pole axe and a longbow hiking, um, I don't know if you have seen pictures of people trying to make this work, but um, it you would not want to take that through dense underbrush. It, it's going to be really annoying. Uh, however, however, um, we don't know that the spear is going to be useful. It's not the most useful pole arm in the world. And another weapon that would go really good with my Scutum weapon set is the crossbow. Um, and I'm picking the crossbow for a variety of reasons. Uh, yes, I did use a bow uh, as a kid, um, but uh, I, am, I am not in longbow shape, so I would not be able to um, take full advantage of a longbow. Um, uh, where a crossbow, I can load it, I can shoot it, I can drop it. Especially for this going through the door scenario, we've kind of already established that we might want to drop some of our weapons. And so uh, in terms of just something that I'm maybe going to just uh, end up, you know, putting in a cachet on the side of the road or to come back to later or giving to somebody or selling or something like that, a crossbow makes a lot of sense. A crossbow is good for hunting. The bolts are not going to be as annoying to carry as arrows. Um, and uh, it, it's going to work. It, the crossbow is going to work just fine on a ship or from the back of a horse. Uh, so it's, it, it, it is a good weapon. Um, good for adventuring. Good for uh, of a wide variety of situations. 
And, you know, and, and I think, you know, kind of min-maxing, we always kind of want the best. Like, yes, okay, it would be best if I, uh, you know, I worked out a lot more than I do and I practiced with the longbow and I, and I brought my 120-pound war bow through. But it's really easy to get 120 pounds of force out of a crossbow. Uh, and, uh, and I don't have to work out and uh, it's not that difficult to, uh, uh, to sight them in. Um, and so, you know, in terms of uh, ease of use, uh, the crossbow, and, and this also kind of goes back to what I said earlier in terms of, you know, you don't know where you're going to be. And also, you know, if you're just going through the door, I mean, maybe there'll be other people that you can ally with. And it's probably going to be a lot easier to teach them how to use a crossbow than to teach them how to use a longbow. It, I would say if they already know how to use a longbow, you're probably not even going to have to teach them how to use a crossbow if for whatever reason they don't have a longbow. So. So, you know, a crossbow is going to be something that's, that's uh, great for bartering, great for giving to an ally, um, you know, great for um, loading, in, 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 you know, especially, especially if we're talking about limited time um, uh, combat, uh, you know, there's no reason I can't have the crossbow loaded, fire it from behind the scutum, and then draw my sword. Um, it, you know, it just it does, the fact that it doesn't, uh, that takes a while to reload, I mean, yes, it would be better if it were faster, but, um, you know, it's essentially a, a sing, even if it's only a single shot weapon, it can still be tremendously useful in a fight. Uh, so, uh, so those, that's kind of my, um, expanded, um, uh, uh, weapon set. Um, you know, um, both Matt Easton and I have kind of talked, talked about sword, but behind a scutum hand protection is not as important but I think he's right. Uh, obviously, I think uh, a hanger or a saber is the ideal form. And if you, if you're in an era that doesn't have hangers and sabers, um, getting the closest Belshian or Messer type sword to, to do that same thing is best. Um, you know, the the fact that a gladius has basically no handguard is something that, you know, the Roman army was able to overcome, but not something you necessarily want for your fingers. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, just to, just to review, uh, layered armor. So we've got, uh, we've got um, our arms on our, armor on our arms and legs, and we've got a nice breastplate, and we've got a helmet all over our gambeson, and we can just take off what, what's not going to be useful to us. Um, and we've got our, both our Ronald dagger and our knife, and we're probably just going to keep both of those because it's not that big a deal. We've got our tomahawk and our hatchet. We're going to keep the best one. Uh, we have, and then we've got our spear and we've got our crossbow, and um, we're going to keep the best one of those. Oh, and we've got obviously with the armor, we've got our scutum and we've got our buckler. We're going to keep the best one of those. Um, and then you know, in terms of uh, you know. Uh, Depending on how flexible this door is, you know, there's a couple other things that I thought of. Obviously, I don't want to go through the door and immediately drop into a lake and uh, and drown in all this heavy equipment. So, uh, you know, if 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 it were me going through, I'd probably want a canoe. Um, and then uh, the other thing that um, I would really want to bring um, in kind of really a, a very flexible situation would be. Uh, a kind of a, a dog sled team. Um, so, um, you know, I don't know if, if it's cheating to put an entire dog sled team and a dog sled on top of a canoe and just kind of push it all through the door and see what happens. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, I would, I would love to have a, a nice lightweight canoe uh, uh, for adventuring, um, especially if I just, if the door opens and I immediately fall into the water, that would be nice have that canoe and then um if i'm if i'm not dumped into the water you know it doesn't really matter if i'm in a duel or i'm in a long uh, war campaign or or i'm on a ship um you know having a dog team uh you know that's going to add a lot of warmth it's going to add a lot of fun it's it's going to really raise more my morale and uh you know i think it i think it's going to be a great addition to the adventure uh, you know, as some of you know from some of my other videos, uh, traveling by dog sled is, is one of uh, my uh, favorite uh, 
uh, tricks. You, you know, you can make a travoy, you can have the sled in the snow, but you can actually have the travoy even if it's, uh, if it's not snowing. Uh, and that uh, dog sled trick would enable me, uh, you know, obviously we talked about a whole bunch of stuff uh, that I wanted to bring. And if I use the, uh, if I'm allowed to use the dog sled trick, then uh, it doesn't really matter what's useful to me or not. I can have all that stuff uh, right there on the sled and the dogs can pull it along for me. And uh, so even if I'm not quite sure if I need a crossbow or a spear, I can just have them right, both of them right there and ready to go. So how about you? You open a magic door, you're going to a medieval technology level. You're not sure if you're gonna be on horseback or on a boat or on foot. You're not sure if you're gonna be dueling or at war or, or whatever. Uh, what weapons and armor would you choose? Uh, let me know in the comments below and have a great day.